Hello guys and welcome to a new series here. Today we have, well I've got something really special for you. Obviously if you remember um, on the channel we have been running a KSP career mode. So I thought I wanted to knock it a, a bit step, a, a bit of a step forward by trying to do something a bit more difficult. Not just a bit more difficult, very very difficult in fact. And I wanted to start a, well... I don't know if I should call it an RSS career mode, a realistic solar system, or real scale solar system. Um, it is basically, uh, it's basically real progression serum I'm going through. And uh, already we've got our first launch, um, which we are launching from the runway actually. Uh, this was just a very very first launch, very basic. The textures I have got inspiration from the um, next one Danish rocket, the suborbital rocket, as we've got lift off of our first rocket, everything is going so fast I can't really keep up. But yeah, the textures of the rocket, which you can see, I have actually um, got the idea from in Copenhagen suborbitals because I'm Danish and I love Copenhagen suborbitals. And I, I, well, it doesn't look, it doesn't really look like it, but you know, I, I tried my best to sort of replicate it. Uh, by the textures that's why it's orange and that is also my main color throughout this space program anyway we have now launched and we have surpassed 30 kilometers of altitude and we are going straight back down again but as you can see we have completed quite a few of those main standard contracts which are kind of easy to to do to, to finish and, and we did well and we absolutely Completely smashed the rocket into the ground there, which was expected obviously because we did we didn't have any parachutes on it So yeah in the end we come down and now the contract system here is a bit weird You just have to get used to it and um, we take the contract off the first flight and pass the karma line So here we've got the second launch of our rocket. This is basically the same thing. It's just a bit longer so we start the engine we get off to initially a fine launch obviously we've got those aerodynamic wings as well uh, but unfortunately the whole thing starts tumbling a bit and we yeah we turn on the x-axis and we start going down and eventually smash into the ground so that was brilliant proving that um such a small little launch in this, in this can be really really difficult so I tried to launch the same thing, I thought maybe I was just a bit unlucky. I made a few tweaks uh, by make, trying to make it uh, rotationally stable. Um, but as you can see, that did not work at all. It, it, got a, it flew a bit further, but not much further, which is sad. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, the what, what, <laughs> did you just see that cat right there? <laughs> Jesus Christ, but yeah. As I was saying, the uh, realistic, uh, re the realism overhaul thing makes it really, really difficult. Anyway, we've got a new launch here. We have got the I don't know what the color <laughs> bugger motor is, but we launch it anyway, and then quickly switch over to our main rocket. And this actually, s s it actually solved the problem really well. Maybe it was because I had four launch clamps. I'm not quite sure about that. But yeah, I can tell you this is difficult. Um, I have fl uh, done a bit of realism overhaul before, so there's no big deal to it. it but it's not like massive. I haven't gone, I haven't landed on the moon, uh, like or anything. And as you can see here, the rocket really gets unstable for some reason, and it is really, really unstable. It has, uh, I would guess, an RPM of a bajillion at this moment. Uh, you can just see how fast it's spinning. I, I, I think it. It slows a bit down once that we get further up, but we passed the karma line, so that is uh, that is completed, and we will get some funds for that. Hang on, I will just I will just take a nice sip of my beer. That is always nice when you can do that. Anyway, we are actually going a bit further than the karma line. We are estimated to have an apoapsis of a hundred and thirty-one kilometers. So. As you can see here, we actually do that, and we surpass 130 kilometers. But when I last played Realism Overhaul, the atmosphere started at 130 kilometers. But 
apparently it's been changed to 140 kilometers so we didn't actually make it into technically space but we passed the common line so it would be taken as space we just didn't get out of the stratosphere but that is another story to tell anyway we are coming down still spinning quite heavily hopefully this will stop we're kind of it's kind of a flat spin until it sort of turn like controls itself due to the aerodynamic balance and we smashed into the ground but all in all that was a very very successful mission and the space program is moving forward very, very rapidly actually so um i got this contract to fly an x plane i think i can't remember the exact contract so i thought valentina here you go and as you know i hate I absolutely hate planes. I don't know why I did this, but yeah, we get off, um, uh, and there's some weird fuck with me being in the room, but we can't lift off, which is always my problem. And this happens. And apparently, that was too fast. And Valentina is dead. So, um, if we consider that I have been running more than thir I actually think it is 13 episodes on my. Um, on the just uh, original KSP career mod that I had with uh, out much well yeah a few much but not really too much modded um, I killed absolutely no one I inside of that episode and I was undergoing a construction of a space station at the moment right here we haven't even sent a man on a rocket yet and we've already killed an astronaut so that's brilliant anyway here the rocket is climbing through um, this was just another sounding rocket, obviously, not really trying to go to orbit. I don't think we will be going for that until next episode. I'm sorry, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I'm sorry about that. This time we don't get as much tumbling, but this time we have scientific equi equipment on board. So uh, that was probably the uh, main thing about this mission. And we also make it into technically space in realism overhaul. Um, and we have. We have apogee at around a hundred and fifty eight kilometers, so going going quite high, I wanna say yeah, quite high, and here I get the log camera so I can take the um different uh, samples here, which I really needed to obviously get my science so we can get better in the future and get some better rockets, and just all in all um it really get get some better technology so we can eventually la launch manned mission as well and whatnot so anyway here we get into that flat spin again um, but eventually we stabilize ourselves and we crash into the um, into the soil here so another great mission another, another accomplished mission as well so um, I, I guess I guess everything is moving forward this is a big launch this is another sounding rocket it's got a vanguard engine so we are getting quite dramatically up in size I think this has a, a diameter a diameter of 1.2 meters or maybe it might just be one yeah it is one meter I can, I can tell um, so a one meter diameter we are using fairings for the first time as well and um, unfortunately I don't have any SAS systems so you will definitely see that on my flying here that I, I, I didn't really I wasn't really prepared for that and I hadn't allowed simulations yet so I didn't really know about that until when I launched it so uh, yeah but uh, initially it was a really really stable uh, rocket so I didn't really have too much to do and yeah you can also see on the right there we have accepted the contract of the first artificial satellite obviously I'm not gunning for that um, we've pretty much just started the rocket program um, so really it will probably happen soon uh, probably just not in this episode anyway as you can see we have a payload here which has now been exposed to the extreme environment of space um, this is uh, an uh, scientific um, uh, mission I didn't try to recover anything I just transmitted everything you have some biological, bi biological samples um, as we get through the atmosphere here and just smash into the, I was about to say ocean, onto the ground and the soil. So another successful mission, everything seems to be a success right now. So we have upgraded the um, vehicle here a bit and made it a bit larger actually. 
um, as we launched it off. You can also see the fairing is a bit different as well. Um, so yeah, we've got about 4k of meters per second, so that's quite some Delta V stats there, massive amounts of Delta V, hashtag not. Uh, anyway, we're launching this time, going uh, as if we're on our way into orbit, that, uh, I guess that's actually quite a nice gravity turn I got there. But this time we are turning out in front of the ocean, and I regretted that, as you can see, I'm trying to see if I can stabilize it going upwards, but I didn't really succeed in that, so I just ended up going straight, so we would land in the ocean eventually. So here we have some um, baby search and engine as well, which will propel us. As you can see there, the uh, the main payload just continues off into space to go and collect some more science with another biological sample here, uh, which is just going to be transmitted again this time because uh, obviously you can see there's no parachute. So. And we're still at this moment breaking records for some reason, which I thought we would be over with, and yeah, we're not. So, going through the atmosphere here, gonna be burning up, I think. Or we might actually survive the re-entry. We did survive the re-entry. We pulled a lot of G's there. And we splashed down into the ocean. Sorry, I needed to have a sip of me drink there because I absolutely couldn't speak. Anyway, now we have got a bit of a more bulky our payload here. No, well, not so much the payloads. It's more about the rocket here, which is it looks really big and bulky. Uh, it, pretty much the same. It's just got a 1.2 diameter, um, and the fairing looked different because I wanted to start to use the orange paint scheme for my rockets. So you are hopefully going to see that in the future. Um, with the rockets, yeah, the man, the main scheme is orange because of covering as well. But also take a lot of, uh, I I like I like them quite a lot, and I would like to go there in the future. So I'd say quite a lot of inspiration for them, especially for my rocket program, if you can call it so. I if if I had my own rocket program, anyway, the Vanguard engine performing pretty nicely here, and we get into. A nice trajectory here. This is a recovery mission, actually. So, as I spoiled it, just because I didn't know what to say at the beginning, it is quite a important payload here, uh, which I hope will survive re-entry. And I've never used parachutes before like this, so I didn't know what to do really. And I just hope for them to work as we're coming through the atmosphere, and we're gonna be. Experiencing immense amount of G forces building up now. Oh, the antenna breaks. Oh, Jesus, we are at about nine Gs right now. Oh, that's a lot. And the parachute deploys and it breaks. Now, I initially thought that. Oh, it says we have five spare shoots. So, okay, let me just apply another one. But apparently, that is just that is not how everything works. So eventually, we're gonna smash into the ground. But for some weird reason that I can't explain to you. I didn't get the footage of the second launch of this, which I can't bring you then, unfortunately. Uh, because of this failure, I launched a new launch, which was completely identical. It succeeded, and I got the science. So, um, we're going to be using that science in the future, hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, that's quite sad. Here we have got a very, very exciting mission. This is the... I can't remember what I call this launch vehicle, actually. And we are here and we get the Vanguard up to RPM and everything. RPM, that was not what I meant, uh, was meant to say, up to the chamber pressure. And we get the fuel flow running. And we launch, Jebediah is on top. I put those four wings on top of the um, cockpit, as you can see, to, because I wanted to stabilize it through re-entry. This is not an attempt of going outside the atmosphere. It was because I had to break the sound barrier contract as you can see in the right but as you can see the wings at the front which I stupidly didn't think about keeps dragging me in the wrong direction so Jebedi is experiencing some G's and I don't know how he survives this and how he is fine with it. he's probably not fine with it but he had to live with it anyway it's actually quite nice control by him he managing to control it but um, obviously we have got about 20 seconds more where we have to be uh, just experiencing more than 350 meters per second so we'll 
do that very very easily we jump up and have an apogee of about I can't do what it says 69 kilometers or oh, 69 <laughs> I'm such a child uh, anyway we are coming through the atmosphere here and you as you can see the wings didn't even work so that was just a complete fail um, and as you can see they just explode and make Jebariah have to spin very very rapidly so those wings were a massive failure and almost risked well it risked uh, Jebediah's life, it put it to a risk, but luckily it didn't die. So here the one shoot deploys. I didn't know why the second one didn't want to deploy because, because I click hop to other shoots as well, so I, I don't know why it didn't work. But anyway, we're coming through here. This was a very, very time uh, consuming process of just falling down the, into the ocean here. Um, so I, you probably can't see it, but this is sped up to about 10 times time acceleration where I normally use 4 times time acceleration of Jebediah just coming down. It, this is, uh, the mission, t the time elapse of the mission right now is 25 minutes and it just keeps uh, 27 minutes, 28, 29, so it's quite a lot of the mission it was just falling down uh, and eventually we will splash down in the ocean and call it a successful mission, a very very frightening and terrible mission but it's successful and we succeeded what we had to do and we got the contract we, uh, you can actually see we had 14 uh, completed contracts there. that's normally what you get when you do your first crewed launch like you get a contract for just doing a launch of a crewed vehicle so it, it, it yeah th those contracts don't pay anything as well so it's not really any huge huge things that we achieved so here we recover it we get plus three science actually only which is nice and we have ten science all in all now so we're obviously gonna go and try to splash that in a minute um, which uh, I think we're nearing the end of the episode as well so I just wanted to let you see how my texture looks um, and just to get used to that to let you like kind of follow it oh yeah it was called the tiger one <laughs> you have to guess why I call it the tiger one it, you probably can't guess it, but it, it's fairly simple why I called it the Tiger One. Let me just say it's based off of some other space capsule name, which I like quite a lot. And just change it to another species slash animal slash non-existent animal, whatever. Anyway, we um, research here the, uh, the early construction to... Uh, eventually go to basic constructions and then we would have survivability and then the main control so we could control the or we could upgrade for the space capsules i will put in a random picture here so that the episode ends as it is supposed to do and um yeah i guess there's not really much more to say uh, other than thank you for watching hopefully you'll stick by this carry mode i i'm really looking forward to it and uh yeah i will see you for the next one Goodbye. Okay,